Here yeah. now to react is Rebecca Heinrichs, a senior fellow at the Hudson Institute. Rebecca, so much to talk about in the foreign policy. Let's, let's focus on Iran, though. Melissa's going to deal with North Korea in a minute. Uh, because a lot of people say that North Korea is, was the most immediate threat to the United States, but long-term Iran was probably even more so. Would you agree with that? I would agree with that, and maybe not even that long term, maybe sort of medium term here, mm. um, because you can look over at North Korea and see what happens whenever you have um, a country run by a dictator that has nuclear weapons and then are trying to come up with the capability that can deliver them to the United right. States. That's exactly what is going to happen in Iran, only rather than, you know, this dictator that we have in North Korea, you've got an Islamist militant, uh, you know, with his, with his finger on the button. And a much bigger country, and frankly, a rich country, a self-contained country in terms of oil. Uh, North Korea, as we know, has to, has to beg for just about everything it has, and so that we have leverage over them. We don't have that kind of leverage with Iran. Let me, ask, let me get to Netanyahu, though. Uh, I want to play a soundbite, because the question really is how much of the cheating that he was talking about and the lying that he was talking about happened after the 2015 Iran deal. Here's Netanyahu. I want to get your reaction. Project Ahmad was a comprehensive program to design build and test nuclear weapons. We can also prove that Iran is secretly storing Project Ahmad material to use at a time of its choice to develop nuclear weapons. So he claims the intel proves that since the 2015 Iran deal was signed, they've been doing the surreptitious, surreptitious stuff that's totally in violation of the deal. Do you agree? Well, you know, our intel community is going to have to look at the cache of documents yeah. that, that Benjamin Netanyahu has provided. But one of the things that you just said hit the nail on the head, and that's that we don't have the leverage in, in Iran that we did with that we do with North Korea. And that is in large part because of the Iran deal that President Obama negotiated. That, that deal did two things. It legitimized Iran and it flooded Iran with cash. Those are some of the objections that President Trump has. And one of the major problems that I have had and many critics of the Iran deal have had is we never really got to the bottom of these military dimensions of the nuclear program. And that is exactly what the prime minister of Israel is pointing to right now. There are military dimensions. They have been lying. And you cannot trust a regime that has been lying and never came clean about the military dimensions of its nuclear program to begin with. Well, there, there are two sides to this debate besides the United States. One are the Europeans. We saw both the French and the German leaders trying to convince us to stay in the deal and, of course, Today, we saw our Israeli allies trying to convince us to get out of the deal. How do we balance those two allies and their, their various approaches to this? Well, the reason that Israel cares so much is because Israel is the one with the giant target on its back. It's yeah. a country the size of New Jersey. It's one of our closest, if not our closest, ally. And they are the ones that are being targeted um, by but Iran. But they're also, we should mention, they are also targeting uh, Iranians who are working in Syria. That's another dimension to this. It's not only the nukes. It's all of the Iranian agents and Iranians around the world, particularly in places like Syria, uh, who Israelis are, are targeting right now. And, and that's because they have a right to defend themselves and yeah. they can't tolerate um, a permanent Iranian military presence in Syria. And so I know that the United States wants to get out of Syria as soon as possible, but we can't get out of there prematurely. And you just look at exactly what the Israelis are doing. And again, they've got a right to defend themselves. They cannot allow Iran to develop nuclear weapons, to continue to lie and get richer, uh, continue to conduct terrorism right. and flood the region with uh, military capabilities, which they're still doing. You know, as complex as North Korea is, you can see how many more dimensions there are to the Iranian problem. I mean, it is really serious. But North Korea is fascinating, too. We're going to deal with that next. Rebecca, thank you so much. Appreciate it.